Hey, these exercises are essential for your core. Let's do it. Hey there, welcome. I'm Coach Tanya at the Critical Bench Compound, joined by my colleague, Coach Brian. What's going on? <laughs> and what we had, this is a great, I'm really excited about this video. We have 13 essential core exercises. You have got to, they really have got to be doing these. Um, great for your core, which we know that's very important because it helps stabilize the spine. Um, excellent posture, which, you know, just sort of domino effects into things like great cardiovascular health, you know, good breathing, uh, better digestion. It's, it's a long list of, you know, if you take care of that one thing, the benefits are huge. Right. So before we show you these 13 exercises, you need to understand that your core is made up of not just these muscles right here, but they're muscles everywhere. Front, back, side, up, down, inside, outside, all around this entire area is your core. So these exercises, you can put these 13 exercises together in one big workout and go step by step exercise by exercise and knock them out and have fun doing so. If you're gonna do that, what I what we're gonna recommend yeah. is spending anywhere between, let's say 15 to 30 seconds on each repetition, or excuse me, each exercise, yeah. or go anywhere between eight and 15 repetitions, yeah. depending on your level of fitness. So are you ready? Any let's last words? Let's do it. Uh, you know what, let's do it. All right, cool, here we go. <laughs> All right, moving to the floor. We're gonna start off with the plank. This is probably the most iconic core exercise that everybody and anybody can be doing. So real quick, I'm gonna break it down. As you can see, Tanya is parallel with the floor. She's looking directly down at her hands. Her spine is parallel with the floor, which is exactly where it needs to be. She's anchoring those elbows down, anchoring these toes down, and just holding this for time. Now you might feel your lower back dropping a little bit. So raise your hips up a little bit, Tanya. There we go. <laughs> that little cue of dropping and lowering back up, everybody's gonna have a tendency to drop those hips naturally yeah. just because yeah. fatigue is setting in. That's right. So that's the first most essential exercise you should be doing for your core. Now to carry that one a little bit further, let's yep. go into a side plank. Another right. great exercise for your transverse abdominis, your obliques, your erector muscles. So one elbow directly underneath the shoulder, hips go up, top shoulder is pulled back, head is looking straight, solid. Perfect position right here. This is going to be a little more challenging than yeah, your traditional plank. I can feel plank. that. <laughs> now, there's always modifications or yeah. ad advanced movements you can integrate into these. But right. again, these are essential. These are the building blocks of all core training programs. Yeah. Now we've got the plank reach. Let's Ready for this one? Yeah. <laughs> okay, my balance. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. All right. okay. So plank reach. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Woo! Now this is going to test you. There's no lie. This is a little bit more advanced. But this is one of those, again, those staple moves that's gonna connect all the systems in the body, the right side, left side, front to the back. Not only that, but you're doing a lot of yeah. proprioceptive work, which is your brain sending signals down yeah. to those muscles to help balance and create a more stable firm yeah. body. Going into it initially is, feels a bit wobbly, but once your brain makes that connection, it's a lot easier to hold Yeah, it. and as we age, men and women alike, <laughs> as we age balance and proprioception mm -hmm. just Compromise. being aware of our surroundings yeah. does diminish as we age so doing exercises like that plank reach is essential yeah. to maintaining good overall health yeah, so let's move into the plank thread okay and while you're uh here watching us i want you to do one thing actually two things I'll, I'll share with you one thing right now hit that subscribe button if you are gonna find if you're finding this video helpful hit that subscribe button share it with somebody you know just be part of our community here and that's one thing that you yeah. can engage with us, just uh, help us out a little bit. So that's the plank reach, oh, excuse me, the, the plank thread, the yeah. thread the needle, however you wanna call it. You might interpret this a little differently. It might be called a helicopter to you, but this is one of those things that's opening up the middle spine, your thoracic spine, integrating a lot of transverse movement, all different planes of the body. You're twisting, you're, you're reaching, you're holding, perfect. Yeah. Awesome, cool. So that's four of the 13. Let's keep moving on. All right. Moving right along. Number five is gonna be the V sit. V sit. So you know that letter V in the alphabet? That's what we're doing. We're creating a V from the lower body to the upper body. Now this one's challenging. If you find this difficult, bend the knees. You're still creating a V from the thighs yeah. to the upper body. You're gonna hold this one for time. Or if you need to build up towards a little bit about amount of time, Hold it for reps, you know, yeah. count in your head, one, two, three, rest. Yeah. One, two, three, rest. And obviously you can progress, which is we're gonna do right, right. here in this moment. Yeah. We're gonna throw in a little bit of rotational twist, mm -hmm. which is the Russian twist right there. So you're in that V-sit position, twisting side to side. Now you can throw a med ball in the hands, mm -hmm. you can throw a dumbbell, 
Again, we're just giving you just a couple different types of exercises that you can yeah, use in within one. your core training. You might want to put a towel or something under your, if your tailbone's a little. Yeah, you have issues and, and if you one. have a known lower back issue yeah. with this, this one might be one of those ones that you want to just ease into or start with your feet anchored on the ground. Mm -hmm. Show them what that might look like. So as you can see, her heels are but anchored on the ground. Here. She's still creating a a little wider of a V hold, yeah. but this is going to be a little bit easier on the yeah. back. Still, I can still feel it in my core, it's just that my heels are kind of keeping me anchored. Right. More, more for balance. So right. lion leg lift is next. Yeah. And if you're looking to see a crunch in this video, you're not, not going to see that. We don't believe in crunches. Crunches are dangerous. They're they've actually hurt have hurt many people. They they cause herniated discs. They're not a functional exercise. So this is a lion leg lift, much more functional for the lower abdominals, yeah. even the lower back as well. So as you can see, head and shoulders are flat on the ground, yeah. legs are up, lifting the hips up, straight forward. I can't, yeah, I can't get much one. more. That's, you're gonna notice that low. I, I can really feel that in the lower abdominals. Yeah. yeah. So what would you recommend um, for somebody maybe who is uh, postpartum, doing that particular exercise? Because I know from my experience, some women that have lower yeah. abdominal um, diastasis recti, there's there's muscle separation. Anytime you're doing lower abdominal it can work. Be tricky. Right. That can be tricky. So you might, first of all, you want to make sure your doctor is giving you the green light to go ahead and do abdominal work. Um, we do have videos. Right, for yeah. The, for the diastasis recti. Um, some things to help make it easier is if, even if you can hold, I can't quite reach it, but holding on to something um, will You're almost help. You're sorry, scoot back up six yeah. inches. There we go. Okay, this can help a little bit. Okay, you can also just, no, actually that's not gonna be much better. <laughs> <laughs> but actually grabbing that um, is actually easier than me doing it without holding on to something. Right. But that is probably something, if you did have muscle separation during pregnancy, um, you want to put the later off, like right. six to nine months. Yeah, you so want to make sure that you're not reopening. Yeah, and, and that really, I don't want to say only applies to the lower abdominal work, but especially lower abdominal work. Yeah. Just you need to definitely be more alert of Much your more body. Careful. Yeah. And uh, if you're unsure, go talk to your doctor, go talk to your OB, even go talk to a trained strength yeah. training professional yeah. and they'll be better be able to assist you. Right. So um, flutter kicks and Ooh. then we're- uh, Flutter kicks. Yeah, <laughs> flutter kicks. So again, these are lower abs, upper quads, uh, deep inside those uh, that pelvic muscle yeah. there. So flutter kicks right there, straight and simple. Another version of this is to go flat all the way down, hands underneath. This is going to help support the yeah. lower back a little bit. So for you, if you're just starting out, this is a great place to start. Yeah. Now, if you're if you're brand new to all of this and you're like, this is mind blowing. <laughs> uh, what I want you to take advantage of, we actually have a, a free five minute core workout that you can download and use right now. Underneath this video, click the pin link. It's going to send you yeah. or give you access to this free five minute core workout no strings attached, take advantage of that. And that'll give you a quick little five minute workout that you can use immediately. So again, we know a lot of this is overwhelming. Some of this comes natural to us because we do this day in and day out. But again, we're just giving you just a, a little bit of a, a snapshot of what what you really need to be focusing on. Yeah. So moving on to, what are we? I don't even know what, know what number we're on, but we're gonna keep moving on. So Yeah, I think we're at nine or 10. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now we're getting into some fun oh, yeah. stuff. Love these. Mountain climbers. Yay. Climbing that invisible mountain. There we go. Driving that knee forward. It's nice, strong, stable upper body. Hand and strength underneath the shoulders. Speed it up for double time. <laughs> Twice as many calories burn when you double time That's it. That's right. <laughs> so that one's tough. It's it's a good finisher. Yeah, it is. We use that here at the compound in many of our, our workouts as a finisher. It's a, just a great overall exercise. Uh, then we're going to go into, let's do a bear hole. Ooh, okay. Doesn't look like much to watch it, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one, pay attention to yeah. her body position. Hands directly under the shoulders, knees to start underneath the hips, toes are there. Now all she did was just pick up her knees up off the floor. So four points of contact, two yes. feet, two hands, and that is it. Put your knees down and rest. So all she's doing <laughs> yeah. is literally lifting it's her knees hole. up, up off the ground, two to three inches and she's holding that. You're holding that for 15 seconds, 30 seconds. 
Add, no. add time with each one. Right, and the whole idea behind this is just to stabilize, get the yeah. internal pressure to lock your core and keep it strong and stable. Yeah. Now, something a little similar is the bird dog. So, yeah. same starting position, tabletop position, one arm opposite leg. This kind of looks like the plank reach. Yes. This is a great exercise to learn basic motor, <laughs> motor skills. Yeah. Trying to say, all right, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. But All when you wild. haven't done it, it feels weird, you know? Yeah, so there's a lot of coordination <laughs> yeah. involved in this one. And it's strong, you're not just like, you're, yeah, it's, so you're holding that strong. Think of this strong. as a horizontal movement, reaching forward and yep. reaching back. back, not reaching forward yeah, and up. Yeah, it's a strong hold. Yeah, it's a strong hold. Yeah. Perfect, all right, we've got two more. Yes, we do. We've Whew. got, let's go with the dead bug. Let's go with the dead bug. And then- And this we'll, one I'm not that good at. Actually, now this, that one this, challenges me. This one I find harder than the bird dog or the plank reach. Yeah, this is the one that I always put through, <laughs> uh, put my clients and athletes through this. So I would have, I'm, I'm gonna correct her already. Yeah, it, this is the one that's got- It does, it messes with your head. <laughs> so think of what she just did, the bird dog, but yep. upside down. So yep. when, essentially what you're doing, one limb, yep. opposite limb, or opposite upper limb or whatever. Yep. So right arm, left leg, yep. left arm, left leg, left, left arm, right leg. Left. Kitty corner. There we go. <laughs> so, and then, yep. So it should be as smooth and effortless as yeah. possible. It see that? Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, this feels so take your time with this. This yeah. is a good exercise to yeah. wake up the core and prepare it for movement. This is called an activation exercise. Yeah. It's essential for prime, uh, just for primal movements to prepare you for whatever is ahead. So I use this a lot in my training. What it's I recommend. great for your brain too. Anybody that, if you're interested in that sort of brain, muscle, body connection, this one is, this one gets your brain really actively involved in that because it, it, it you right. have to think. You're right. Yeah. And last but not least is the glute bridge. And you're probably thinking, how is a glute bridge a core exercise? Mm -hmm. Well, scroll back a few minutes into this video. And like I said, your glutes are part of your yeah. core because they're a stabilizing yes. muscle, they're a prime mover, they're a postural muscle, which helps you keep, stay upright, and your core is... is Think of your whole trunk. Right, <laughs> your core is responsible for helping, or excuse me, your glutes are responsible for helping mm -hmm. keep your hips stabilized. So not, none other than the glute bridge right here. Head and shoulders anchored on the floor, knees bent. Squeeze. Squeeze, Squeeze. at the top, relax at the bottom. That's pretty so much it. Yeah. So again, in summary, 13 essential exercises. Use all of these in one workout. If you're brand new to exercise, I maybe start with splitting this in half. On one day, do the first half. On the next day, do the second half. You build your own reps, eight to 12 to 15 repetitions, holding for time, yeah. 15 seconds, 30 mm -hmm. seconds. And just build on it. And you're just build gonna build on it. On yeah. it. Okay, there you have it, 13 essential core exercises that you have got to be doing. You're gonna love those and you're gonna quickly notice with consistency that you're going, you're very quickly going to develop and build strength in that core. And you're probably also gonna notice that you are, um, you know, you're standing straighter. You may even notice improvements in your digestion. And, and other things, okay? Um, just being more awake, more alert. So all good things, a very important part of the body that's often neglected, um, not intentionally, but by people doing other exercises and not really focusing on core strengthening movements. So those are the 13 you've got to be doing. Don't forget if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe um, button and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our fantastic content. And remember, before you leave here, click that pinned comment in the comment section below for that free five minute core workup. Click the box in your email. Boom, it's on its way to you right now. I'm Coach Tanya here at Critical Bench. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.